morning, everybody. I'm so glad that you have chosen to join us in this time of worship here this morning. I would invite you to please, please, I ask each week to let us know that you are here. If you'll just drop a comment below that I'm here or good morning or, or just a thumbs up to let us know that you've joined us in this time of worship. That is so important, I believe, in this time when we feel so separated. This morning, in light of the week's events, I want to open our time with a prayer. It's a prayer that I've um, adapted from a well-respected uh, Lutheran pastor, Nadia Bowles Weber. She's one of my favorite theologians and writers, authors, um, speakers, and I have taken one of her prayers and, and would like to share an adaptation with you this morning. So before we even get started, let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, this has been a doozy of a week. If anxiety produced a sound, it would be deafening right now. Lord, open our ears to the sounds we need most. The wild geese overhead, Aretha Franklin's amazing grace, the sound of my friend on the other end of the phone, the sugar high laughter of children who need us to dial down the doom. God, if fear could be seen, it would be obscuring everything. Open our eyes to the sights that we need most. My puppy underfoot with a toy in her mouth, ready to play. The brightening of my neighbor's eyes under their mask when I pass them in the stairwell. That sidewalk covered in an oak, oak tree's fallen leaves like nature's confetti. Holy One, if sorrow could be tasted, the bitterness would overcome us. Open our mouths to the sweetness we need. Words of kindness, deep unhurried kisses, and absolutely as much Ben and Jerry's as we deem necessary. Lord, help us to remember that you are steadfast in your presence to never leave us or forsake us. Amen. And now let's begin our time of worship with a call to worship. Come, let us kneel in the darkness and the chaos of this world. Let us bow before the God of creation and renewal. Let us remain here until we see God's light emerge. Let us wait with hope-filled hearts as Christ's image grows within us and shows us light. In this time of worship, let Christ speak to us and teach us until we become a new creation and we open our hearts to be God's home. Amen. And now if you'll bow with me with our opening prayer. God of creation who brought forth light from darkness and order from chaos, we are your creation. We pray that your spirit will be with us this day as we share in this time of worship and as we proclaim your power and might. You, who in the form of a spirit flew over the chaotic waters of creation and who appeared as a dove before Jesus at his baptism, grace us here in this time. Grace us with your holy presence. Lord, in this time of worship, may we hear the whisper of your voice and feel the brush of your wings and know that your gift of life is truly upon us. Amen. Our reading from the psalm this morning comes from Psalm 20, 29, and I'll be reading selected verses. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. 
The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Amen. And now I invite you to bow with me as we go to God in a time of confession. Let us pray. Holy God, we gather this morning as a very imperfect people. You created us in your image and lovingly placed us in this world that you created. You surround us with others who walk this journey with us. You promise your steadfast presence and offer your unending love and care. And yet, Lord, we question and we doubt. We allow ourselves to fall into the grips of fear and doubt. You provide for our needs, and yet, Lord, we want more. We often become jealous of the status and things that others have, rather than being thankful for the ways you provide for our own needs. You ask us to love our neighbors, and yet we turn our vision inward and worry solely about our own comfort and well-being. We spend our time and resources so often on the me and mine. And Lord, instead of focusing on you, we allow the chaos and troubles of this world around us to distract us. We become people of this world instead of people of your kingdom. So often we lose focus on what unites us and instead focus on what divides us. For all these things, Lord, we are heartily sorry. We lay these failings before you. And now, dear God, we acknowledge that each one of us individually have times and places where we have fallen short in the eyes of our brothers and sisters, in our own eyes, and certainly in your eyes. God of grace and mercy, receive our own individual voices of confession now in this moment. For all of these failings, Lord, we ask your forgiveness. Cover us with your grace and mercy. Cleanse our hearts and spirits with your grace and blanket us with your peace and assurance. Lord, this we do sincerely pray. Amen. And now hear these wonderful words of assurance. Just as the God of creation spoke the universe into being, God speaks love and light and forgiveness into being for each one of us. Know that by offering those words of repentance, the God of great grace and mercy and love forgives, sustains, and redeems you. Thanks be to our God. Amen. This morning we come together and share our joys and concerns as we do each week. And of course we lift our Everett and Isabella, Bubba, Carol, Virginia, I lift to you my sister Mandy, who is probably on about day 18 of fighting COVID. She is at home, but still having so much struggle in her recovery, so I lift her and her family in prayer. We lift those who are fighting this pandemic firsthand. I was able to spend some time last night with our dear friend Butler, who is the chap one of the chaplains at the VA hospital, and she specifically asked that 
we lift all health care providers and all hospital staff in our prayers. And she asked me to ask you, if you know of someone fighting this battle, check on them, call them, send them a text, send a card in the mail, let them know that you care because they are running on fumes. And we lift all those this morning who suffer under the weight of anxiety, depression, fear, those who are feeling so lonely and isolated, those who battle mental illness and addictions just daily. We lift those who grieve, grieve losses of loved ones, but loss of other kinds as well, physical losses, and we lift our students, our teachers, and our parents. And of, of course, we lift our nation and its leaders this morning. I deeply, deeply ask and challenge you to lift our nation in prayer, prayers for peace and unity, reconciliation, because now is the time above all other times. Let us go to God in prayer. Creator God, how wondrous are your ways. Even when we sit and wonder where you are, you are there. Even when we question, you are the answer. Even when we want to give in to chaos, you bring life and renewal. How thankful we are that you are the God of creation, the God of renewal, and the God who we can trust. Lord, you bless us beyond our understanding. We give you thanks and praise for all the many ways that you love and care for us. Even in the midst of chaos and struggle and worries, Lord, when we focus on you, we know that we are truly blessed. For shelter from the cold rain and for food and sustenance that keeps us going. For our very breath that gives us life, Lord, we give you thanks. For friends and family, for this, your church, for health and health care when we need it. Lord, we offer you all thanks and praise. And now these offerings of personal thanksgiving that we lift to you now, we offer them to you. Lord, let us never be callous to the countless ways that you care for us. Let us become people of Eucharisteo, people who live in a constant state of thanksgiving. But God, we know, even in this thankfulness, Lord, we know that we all struggle with burdens and worries that weigh us down and cause our spirits to be heavy. There have been so many shared just now, but God, we know that there are others places of fear and uncertainty, people who feel lost, who grieve and face demons that consume, situations of financial and physical burdens, so many people and places that need your loving, caring, tender touch. We offer to you now those that have not been shared here this morning, those that weigh on our concern. Here are those now. God, take each one and care for each as only you know. Give us the peace and assurance that you are indeed the Lord of love and light, the God of grace and mercy, the giver of peace and comfort. Release the grip of worry on our hearts and bring us peace. Help us to rest in the comforting knowledge that you are faithful in your love and support of us, your beloved children. And now, Holy One, we lift to you our church and each one of us individually as your unique disciples. 
Give us strength and courage to be warriors in your battle. Use us as light in the darkness of this world. Show us how to... heal the brokenness that surrounds us. Let us be the ambassadors of peace and justice in the midst of the brokenness of this world we live in. Send us into the world to be your kingdom builders and indeed let your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. Heal us and heal this world Renew us with your life-giving waters and reaffirm our baptisms as your children. Let us go forth from this time together to be people of peace and hope. And now, Creator God, hear us as we join our voices in prayer, praying together the prayer that your blessed Son, our Savior and Redeemer, taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And um, we turn now to our scripture reading. The first reading I'll be sharing is from the book of Genesis, the very first verses, verses 1 through 5 of chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And now our New Testament reading comes from the Gospel of Mark. I'll be reading from chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. And so John came baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love and with you I am well pleased. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I have shared with y'all many times over the last eight years of our time together that during that time there have been several times where I've had a, a sermon in the works and even on occasion, not always, but on occasion, finished only to have world events and the Holy Spirit interrupt my plans. Well, let me tell you, this was one of those weeks. Early in the week, I had read all the scriptures from the lectionary and I decided on which one I would focus on for this Sunday. 
I did all the research and I had a sermon kind of outlined and, and even partly written. I had the liturgy for the week all planned out and written and typed up, you know, the call to worship and the opening prayer and all. And like I said, I had my sermon well underway, but then Wednesday happened. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that Wednesday was a day that now holds images and events that will long be seared into the minds and hearts of our nation. Watching those images rattled and disturbed my own heart and mind and spirit. On Thursday, when I returned to my work of writing this sermon, I could not shake the unsettled state that I found myself in. I reflected back on the events that took place in Washington, and I laid those heartbreaking and disturbing images on top of the scripture and the message that I had planned and written out for the focus for today. And when I did that, I knew that what I had planned wasn't right. I could not shake the feeling that I must go in a different direction. And so what you're going to hear this morning is what I truly believe to be the result of the Holy Spirit's nudgings. Originally, the text for this morning was what I just read from the Gospel of Mark. The story, the beautiful story of the baptism of Christ such an important event in our faith history, the event in the life of Christ that marked the beginning of his earthly ministry, a moment when the very Spirit of God descended from the heavens in the form of a dove, a magnificent event when God's voice boomed from the heavens, you are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. There's so much rich material in that text that we could preach from. I wasn't even going to touch on the Old Testament reading from Genesis, which really is not out of the ordinary for me since I tend to be a New Testament preacher. But here I am this morning because of the recent events in our nation's capital and the nudgings of the Holy Spirit using the story from Genesis as the focus for this morning's message, the story of God's creation of the universe. So let's start right there. Here again, the very first words of Genesis and, and of course the very first words of the entire Bible. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. Moses was the author of the book of Genesis. And in this text, he says nothing about where God came from. Nothing about God's origin, because there's nothing there to say. God had no origin. God has always been. There has never been a time where God was not. In the beginning, God. And why is that such a big deal? Because God reigns supreme. God doesn't owe his existence to anyone or anything because God has always been. And Moses knew that too well. Remember when God introduced himself to Moses in the book of Exodus? In chapter 3, we read, The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people out of Egypt. And so Moses asked God in that moment, Well, who do I tell Pharaoh? Who, who sent me? Literally translated, God's answer sounds a bit odd in our English language. Literally translated, God's words were, I be. 
But in other words, he says, I am. I exist. God told Moses to tell Pharaoh, I am sent me to you. I am. In other words, God is. God has been forever. God is now and God will forever be. In the beginning, God. And now let's move on from those first four words and read the rest of verse 1 and into verse 2. We read, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. If we read that same verse in the New Revised Standard Version, it's described, the earth is described as a formless void. In those two short pieces of verses, there are some pretty important words that I want you to pay close attention to this morning, aside from the first four that are so very important that we just talked about. The words I want you to hear are these. For me, those words paint a pretty incredible picture. They tell me that there were some pretty wild, incredible things happening in this creation story. Formlessness and void. Emptiness. Disorder. Dark. Deep. Nothingness. Oblivion. Some scholars describe this creation story setting with the word chaos. Imagine that with me for a moment. Formless void, utter darkness, chaos, emptiness, disorder. Nothing to distinguish one part from another. And then we read the second part of verse 2. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Again, if we turn to the New Revised Standard Version, it says, A wind from God swept over the face of the waters. So there, in the midst of that absolute darkness and chaos, the Spirit of God moved. A wind in the form of breath, the very Spirit, Spirit of God blows over that chaos and that emptiness, over that uncertainty and the threat of those deep, dark waters. Can you imagine what that was even like? I bet it was a sound of seismic proportions, loud and ferocious and wild, a deafening sound, one that pierces it pierced every part of the chaos. But then, maybe not. Maybe it wasn't like that at all. Maybe instead of that booming, deafening, thunderous roar, maybe it was a soft, whispering, zephyr-like sound. A gentle, light, delicate wind like those sweet breezes in the springtime that make those newly sprouted leaves sort of dance in delight. Was it a deafening, wild, ferocious wind? Or was it the softest, gentlest whisper of a breeze? We don't know, and we can't know. But here is what we do know. However that wind presented itself, it was the power of God. A power and might that are beyond our imagining, beyond our understanding, outside of our human realm of thinking. And then it happens. 
into this chaos and into this wind comes a voice, the voice of God. The very same voice that we read about in the Psalms reading for this morning. Hear about that verse of that voice again. Some of the verses read, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. That's just a few of the verses we read. It goes on and on to describe the voice of God, the voice that tamed the chaos in Genesis, the voice of creation. Here, verse 3, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And with those words, the creation of the universe began and continued from there because God spoke. God created the entire universe out of chaos simply by the power of his word. Nothing happened by chance, but instead everything happened because God spoke. God commanded light to shine in the darkness. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Just like that, God spoke light into being. If we were to continue reading on in chapter 1, we would read that God continued to speak, and waters separated from dry land, and plants and animals came into being, and Creatures of the sea and the sky and all creeping things were created. And with each and every element of creation that was formed, God pronounced a blessing on what had been made by saying, It is good. Each day, evening and morning, God's word sounded forth and parts of the universe were created. Each day, God looked upon what had been created and proclaimed it as good. So out of that chaos, out of that void, out of that darkness, God created something good. And that's what I want us to hear and remember from our time together this morning. God brought goodness out of chaos. Y'all, I do not have to tell you how chaotic our world is right now. The past week has been a 12 out of 10 on the chaos meter. The pandemic rages. Hospitals are at breaking points. As I mentioned when I spoke with Butler, doctors and nurses and hospital staff are running on empty. They are physically, mentally, and emotionally drained. Deaths continue to surpass previous days' records. I personally know of a hospital in our state that actually ran out of body bags. People are out of work. Folks are facing eviction. Families are going hungry. Violence is raging. Students and teachers and parents continue to struggle with online remote learning. Arguments over the vaccine, worries about its safety and troubles with rollout, fear and uncertainty worry and anxiety, illness and death, chaos. So, so much chaos. And then came Wednesday. Talk about chaos. Now, I understand that many of us hold very different feelings about our political leaders. And that's one of the beauties of our nation is that we can disagree about politics and, and the way we think about things, but we can still live and work and play together. He 
peacefully. But Wednesday was anything but peaceful. Wednesday's violence was light years removed from anything that I would call a disagreement. No matter which end of the political spectrum you live in, I pray that you did not find the events of Wednesday okay. The violence and recklessness and irresponsible behavior on the part of those who attacked and stormed our Capitol building caused even more fear and anxiety and worry and trouble in an already fearful and uncertain and chaotic time. The hate and mayhem, the violence and death shown on that news, the news reports, that is just staggering to me. And that only added more worry and anxiety in an already scary time. More and more chaos on top of an already chaotic time. Chaos on top of chaos on top of chaos. Maybe in the last few days and weeks and maybe even months, you have felt like you are living in something like the chaos that we read about in Genesis. Like you're being overcome by raging deep waters, battling darkness, living empty and without a sense of order, consumed by chaos. Maybe you've asked yourself questions like, when is it going to stop? How much more can we take? Maybe you have cried out either aloud or within your spirit like the psalmist did. How long, how long, O oh Lord? But y'all, hear this. Hear this and hear it well. The God who created order out of chaos in the beginning of time still reigns. The God who spoke creation into being and proclaimed it good still abides with us, loving us, caring for us, and providing for us. The God who has always been who is and who will forever be is still in control. And that God I speak of, that God is our God. So in this current chaos that we find ourselves in, please know that God will bring something new and God will call it good. God's Holy Spirit, the very breath of God that hovered over that chaos and spoke light and life into being out of formless, dark void is the same Spirit that abides with and in each of us today. That is the very same Spirit that gives us the sustaining breath we need as we live and move and have our being. That very same God who created form out of formlessness and created earth out of no earth will create peace and will bring about something good in the face of chaos. That very same God who through his power and might tamed the darkness and brought light will also bring light into these dark days. Chaos will not win. Chaos will not prevail. Our God of creation tamed the chaos in the beginning and our God will do the very same thing in these troublesome days. Believe that and know that to be truth, my friends. 
Thanks be to our God. Amen. And um, I want to take a moment and thank each of you who continue to send in your tithes and your offerings. I encouraged you last week to mail those in as we do check the mail there at church and we do deposit and need your tithes and offerings. And thank you to those who so faithfully do just that. As we leave this time together, I will leave you now with this benediction. Remember that God is indeed the Lord over chaos, and God will rule mightily forever. My prayer. The spirit who reigns over all of creation will give us strength, fill us with hope, and bless us, bless our country, and bring the world much needed peace. Um, and now as we bid goodbye, until next time, I invite you, ask you, and challenge you to stay safe. Take care of yourself and your loved ones, and above all things, keep the faith. Amen.